determined, it's readily achievable. The courts, <laughs> it really doesn't come into play till you get sued. It's what's going to be defensible. A regional muffler shop, they're not a multi-billion dollar company, but they probably have some resources if they've got, you know, nine muffler shops through a region. What happens, especially in the litigation states like California, Florida, and New York, they count on most people not doing anything. So then they're a sitting duck. Whereas if they actually go through, do a survey, find out what barriers they have, and then prioritize it. They don't necessarily have to go in and fix everything, but at least if they're embarking on their barrier removal plan and showing a good faith effort, if they are ever sued, they can show that effort and that they're not ignoring the law. What happens in most of the cases is that nothing is done, and so they're on the hook because they just ignored the law for the last 30 years. They have nothing to defend themselves with because they haven't done anything. When you do embark on a barrier removal plan, by removing those barriers, you improve access because I guarantee you there are disabled people that are looking at your site. They see no parking stall, a step going up to the curb to get into the dry cleaning shop. Down the road is a brand new one with a curb ramp and a nice access aisle, flat. I can get in. I'm going to take my business there.